Hello, everybody. I'm not sure how to show. It's been a little while since I've done anything, really. Mm -hmm. uh, with me here today is my lovely wife. And we're going to be responding to some of the reviews and requests that have been put up on my fan story, Say and Tail, uh, which started earlier this year and is looking to continue for quite some time. Um, I'm hopefully going to run it through basically till where the anime ends, but I'm only including canonical arcs. Uh, with the exclusion of the movies, which I'm going to figure out how to work them into the story, which I'm really looking forward to. But for right now, we're going to start with uh, Chapter 4 of Sandtail. And I honestly don't remember what the name of that chapter was, but <laughs> let's start. Alright, so the first review was Joe Clone, and he said, Well, this was awesome. Nazi got creamed, Urza beat Lauren, Sensu Bean, Sensu Bean! <laughs> Sensu Bean! <laughs> Super Saiyan Prime? Question mark. Um, a literal banquet in heaven with an eating contest, no less. And Super Saiyan 1 is revealed. If I could describe this chapter in one word, whoa. Cue porcupine, porcupine from Disney's Chicken Little. Oh. I saw that movie a long time ago. What what even is that song? Awesome. We'll have to like bring up. Okay. To bring up the. I'll have to bring it up. An image or something. Okay. All right. <laughs> Um, nice. Okay, yeah, I actually have a lot of fun with this with this chapter, despite not remembering what the name is. I do remember very much what happens in it. Um, they start their three month uh, training period, which of course is interrupted by the Celestial Spirit World Party, which eats up all their time and stuff. And at the end of it, Goron gets very angry about it, especially due to the fact that the Celestial Spirit King interfered with their timelines in a, not in a little bit of a messed up way. Um, which triggered his Super Saiyan transformation, and at the end of it, he's like, oh crap, I just showed everybody what I can actually do, I wasn't supposed to do that. Um, but in regards to the Super Saiyan Prime thing, so that's a reference to the Super Saiyan 4 transformation, which I always thought was kind of a, it was kind of like the wrong name to use for it, because the process for becoming that level of Super Saiyan is completely different from the other ones. So I decided to give it a different name in this, uh, in this story. Sweet. So... Mijin Lightus. Mm -hmm. um, lol, great chapter. I'm dying from laughing so much. And then Saiyan God 101 is, I don't know if it's oops or ops. In I think it's supposed to be oops. Oops, indeed. Yeah. Um, yeah, I had, a lot of, I had a lot of laughing happening on my end because I, like, the, 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 the party scene was just way, way too much fun to write. So, yes, there was, mu there was much laughs. It's pretty entertaining. All right, so for chapter five, um, Mijin Lightus. I'll stop Goran from hurting you. Great chapter, mate. And yes, I can fight a Super Saiyan in any of their forms. Well, I would like to see that. Um, the reference to that is in the end of the Omaki section. I kind of made Goran mad, and he turned into a Super Saiyan, and I'm like, hey, no Super Saiyan's backstage, but I mm -hmm. cut it off. I didn't really show them what happened after that. Um, just a funny little thing that I, that I was trying to do. I'm, let's see, I'm trying to remember. Um, yes, yes, I remember how this, this chapter is them going to Crocus and the Grand Magic Games beginning with the preliminary round where like all 108 teams go into the labyrinth and they're fighting to get the top eight places. All right, Joe Clone. Ah, yeah, it is time. Macarus. Macarus. Macarus? <laughs> Macarus? Yeah, Macarus. I'm going to Mataris, come on, you can take on a Super Saiyan. I can take on a Super Saiyan. Kyo Piana, let's go. This chapter was just chocked full of great moments, and only by going off my limited knowledge of ships without having watched Fairy Tale yet. I understand your feelings about Juvia. Like, before she met Grey, what was she like? I'd like to answer that question. I I'd like the answer to that question. Jalal showing up unex was unexpected, but I was happy to see him. Jersey forever. <laughs> yes. What's planned for Gorin? There's nothing I can predict. Yes, I can take on a Super Saiyan because I control the Super Saiyans that are written in the story, and I could write myself in as having Super Saiyan God powers or whatever. <laughs> um, apparently he's very excited for the Kaioken Kinana. That was... I thought that was... I thought, I thought about that one a little bit. I'm like, do I just give her, like, the... the, uh, the, me the, the, the laser attacks and stuff, or do I actually give her an amplification technique? And eventually I decided to go with the amplification technique, because technically... Kaioken can be learned by anybody. I mean, I'm surprised that Goku hasn't taught it to any of his friends or any of his kids. I mean, it's really come in handy for him, and it seems like something he should pass on. But I guess Goron's just nicer than Goku is. Um, let's see. So, in answer to what Juvia was like before she joined Fairy Tail and all this, she was actually part of a rival guild called Phantom Lord. She actually worked... very different. She, 
she was very different, but I have a problem with why she changed, and I'll get to that in a second. And that's that, um, so she, she actually took part in the plot to kidnap Lucy and hold her for ransom because her father has a lot of money. Um, and the plot was ultimately foiled by Natsu and the others, as it so often is. Um, Juvia uh, and Gaggio actually was also part of this guild. Uh, went on to join Fairy Tale after being convinced by Makarov. Um, but the reason Juvia's personality is so changed from what it used to be, and she used to be just kind of bland, like she didn't really seem to take much interest in anything that was going on. Um, part of this was because she always caused terrain wherever she went. She never had a good handle on that ability because part of it was that her magic was leaking out of control. It almost made her more interesting, though. It did. In some ways, I thought she was a little more interesting as a villain than as an ally. Because as an ally, her only obsession, her, her only driving force is Ray Fullbuster. She does little to nothing outside of his sphere of influence. It's like she's no longer powerful. She used to be like super, super powerful and scary. And That's, now it's like, I mean, she's strong and she can do really good, like, she can, I mean, she could take a lot of people on, but even so, she gets so distracted emotionally and... Even, like, even when she's determined, she seems weaker than she used to be. Yeah, yeah. I don't, yeah, I think, I think her relationship with Grey has definitely hurt her character more than anything, and I don't, and I don't like criticizing Hinoma Shinoma too much, but this is one of those things where I really have to do it. He absolutely wasted a good, another good character potential on this. Mm -hmm. um, which is disappointing, but I'm also working to fix it. Yeah. As much as All I can. Alright, A8. Also, oh. yes, Jersey forever. Yeah. I agree. Um, A8. I love your work. Do continue. Will do. See, I think we got a lot of reviews for chapter, chapter six. six. There's a few more. See, yeah. chapter six was. Yeah. Gotta scroll. I don't know. My oh boy. Computer. So go. let's see. All right, um, Jamie Via 2001. Awesome. Oh, so this this chapter this chapter is um is the. Or Jaime. It might be Jaime. I don't know. Um, Depends. It could be Jamie. Villa, if you're white, or Jaime Villa, if you're not. So. Um, this chapter was the one where they did the um, the hidden game on the first day of the Grand Magic Games. Like they introduced all the teams. The teams found out, hey, there's two of us. Um, most of them, most of them seem kind of antagonistic towards each other. But Groin's like, no, I don't care. We're all we're all part of the same guild. I don't really see any reason to go after each other actively. Um, and it ended on a cliffhanger where Groin triggers his Super Saiyan transformation again for the first time in active combat that we're going to see in this story against the Wizard Saint Jura. Awesome. Sorry. Hi, Mrs. Awesome job. Awesome story. Keep it up. I shall do so. And Saiyan God 101, damn cliffhangers. And, if it, and it was just getting good. Well, then come back next chapter and it'll get great. <laughs> Joe Clone. Super Saiyan time. Ah, oh, yeah. This is my first hearing of Raven's Tale. I'm gonna, I'm gonna kill him. This is just another one of your great chapters. Can't wait for more. Well, thank you. Um, so I guess if you don't know much about Raven's Tale, I kind of explained in the story, but just some backdrop for them. Um, when, when uh, Loxus' son, Lo sorry, uh, when uh, Makarov's son, Loxus' father, was younger, he did something that got him kicked out of Fairy Town. This messed up Loxus in several regards. But uh, out of revenge, Ivan went on to form his own guild called Raven's Hail, whose sole purpose is the destruction of Fairy Town. Alrighty. Kid Kaboom One, this is a fabulous birthday gift. Well, maybe a few days late, but no matter. Amazing work as always. Well, happy belated birthday to you. Amazing Lightus, great chapter mate. Can't wait for more. And uh, an anonymous yeah. guest, please have Team Four Star, Team Four Star Krillin, or Team Four Star Mr. Popo show up. Popo versus Zerath. What's a Popo versus Zerath? <laughs> I don't know who would win that, because like one of them, one of them like can't be killed, but I don't know. It's Mr. Popo. Always scratch, make a circle. Always scratch, make a circle. See, I haven't seen the actual Dragon Ball. I've only seen the bridge because he's made me. So that's, the, that's what I think of. He's like, he's way more chill, but he's still super rude, dude, in, in the original. Okay. All right. So this is a long so, one. Yeah, here. and bear with me because my brain is gone because I'm sleep deprived. And we'll see if I can actually read through this. All right. 
well and finally caught up after a long time of not reading this due to my business picking up. Oh, cool. Dude, that's and awesome. I do have to say it's pretty interesting. Dude. Although I think you might have forgotten how instant transmission worked during that part where the kid went over the ocean given how it needs a target to work. I'm all for giving side characters much needed attention if they're lacking some. However, it feels like you're overdoing and forcing Hana. Kinana. Oh, Kinana on us in this story with how you're directing her develop, developing. Anna, in my opinion. In my opinion. Hmm. The kid really doesn't know how much of a hypocrite he's being regarding time related things since he's pretty much messing up history of, of, the, fairy, of the world of fairy tales just by being there. In general, true. If if it, if anything, the Time Patrol do find scrolls that contain history of the world fairy tale and the timeness, and find him, he better get a mass exploding. Using my own character, I thought of, of a possible outcome to it. Of course, I only thought of it in my head and haven't written it since it would basically mean I stole your character. Anyway, the fight in this next chapter is definitely something to look forward to. Cannot wait. Keep up the good work and stay awesome. So, I like this review a lot, um, is despite its criticisms, because, and more so because of the way the criticism is portrayed. They're very respectful about it. Mm -hmm. um, they held up their own points and why they didn't like something instead of just telling me that something sucks. So, I can definitely, I can definitely take this one. Um, so, I'm glad that you like a lot of it. Um, and I'm glad you're looking forward to the next chapter because I need you to come back and hopefully get another one of these reviews. Um, in regards to the interest of transmission, uh, he could have easily locked up to the power signature of a giant fish because there is probably one of those swimming out there. It's a world full of magic. There's something that he could have locked onto in the middle of the ocean because he went out to train over the ocean or trying to send a Super Saiyan 2, but he was unable to succeed. I don't know if you remember that uh, during chapter 4. He did some training by himself. He used instant transmission. Normally you need a power signature to lock okay. onto. Um, I guess I didn't include, I guess I didn't make that very clear, but yes, he did use something, not necessarily, I don't really know necessarily what, I don't think it's that important, um, to teleport out to the ocean where he could train without being disturbed. Um, in regards to him messing up the timeline, um, you and I know that, but he doesn't know that. I mean, that's, I mean, to him, if you, I mean, to him, it's like, how do I put this? That's like, if I moved to Italy and then someone told me, hey, you're going to blow up the world just because you moved over here, I'd be like, what are you talking about? Because as far as he's concerned, he hasn't gone. He didn't go back in time. He didn't tell Shenron to send him back in time anywhere. He's just gone to another place entirely. So as far as he's concerned, he hasn't broken any rules regarding changing time. Although, as we'll see later on, that will more than likely come into effect. What with uh, the Grand Magic Games are coming to a close soon enough. Um, so he'll be aware, and he'll he'll become aware of the changes that he's yeah. inadvertently made. Yeah. The, the Time Patrol isn't done in this story. They will have an appearance later on. For the most part, I am going to use fairy tale arcs. However, there is one element of Dragon Ball Z that I will bring in towards the end of this story, and I think that part you guys are going to like quite a bit. Yeah, um, it's got some dramatic irony going on. Yeah, as far that's as mostly Kina, what this is. I would say, you know, yeah, she's a minor character, but, you know, I think that she's a character who has a lot of potential. And fairy tale, it's impossible to like flesh out all of those characters because there's so many. But we wanted to have somebody who can compliment Warren mm -hmm. in a way. Mm -hmm. And so she seemed like a character who was really interesting and who I think didn't get enough screen time. Yeah. In my opinion. And so we thought, you know, why not throw in Kinana as a as a love interest slash just you know supporting character for Warren to kind of balance him out and. I I did receive at one point uh, a private message from uh, from Saying God 101 saying he was interested to see how Goron and Cobra will get along because yeah. of his relationship with Kinana. Um, and for again for backstory, um, Kinana was the purple snake that Cobra used to ride around on. Um, and he doesn't know what's become of her at this point, um, but he'll figure it out. And of course, that'll probably put that might cause some friction between the two of them. I haven't quite got to that part yet, but. In regards for things coming up, we're going to be doing uh, we're going to be doing the Grand Magic Games, then there's the Dragon King Festival, and then after that, we're going to be incorporating the Fairy Tale Phoenix Priestess movie, which I'm really looking forward to because there's some major changes coming out of that. Cool. So, thank you all for joining us. Uh, thank you for listening to our reviews, for us leading the, through the reviews and our responses. If you guys have any questions, please leave them up in the review so my wife and I can get to them. We really enjoy doing this. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Have a good day. Red Swordsman out. <laughs>